Hey guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So today I'm going to be looking at another game stick uh, which was purchased from Amazon. Um, these things are basically flooded the market. I kind of fancy the look of this one. It comes complete with these sort of PlayStation 5 style controllers. Um, and it's basically another game stick device. This one looks pretty cool. It says it supports 10 simulators. Not emulators, I don't know why they're calling it that, but yeah. It looks kind of interesting. Um, yeah, without further ado, we'll get this unboxed and we'll have a look at it and see what it's actually like. Okay, so let's get this thing unboxed. Oh, it's quite interesting to see. We've got two kind of PlayStation style, PlayStation 5 style controllers. It's pretty basically obvious a rip off of them, but they are just basic cheap hollow plastic looking things, let's see look the buttons, yeah that kind of feels like an awful lot of movement in that d-pad oh and they don't even click in, I think there is options to click them in but there's not a lot of clickability there yeah it does feel very cheap yeah mode button and you've got your shoulder buttons as well, very interesting, a very cheap device, you've basically got an on off switch at this bottom there and um, let's see what it actually takes, we've got yeah, it takes two AAA batteries in there. So there's two of them included in the box, which is quite cool. Now, they look the part, but yeah, once you feel them, yeah, it doesn't feel the greatest. But whether they, they're obviously okay for playing games on, we'll find out soon enough. But yeah, looks nice, but yeah, it does feel pretty cheap. Okay, inside the box as well, you've got another... This is basically your charge cable, or your basically it's your power cable for the... Uh, device, we've also got a little wireless dongle, not entirely sure what that's all about, that'll be for your um, joysticks or joypads even, this'll be an extension if you need to fit your game stick into an awkward TV, um, there is a game stick also in the box, let's have a look, it does look very nice, certainly a, a, one of the better looking um, game sticks, so this is like the game stick pro, not entirely sure what the proper name of these things are, it does look as if they're trying to design it as a, a PlayStation 5 or something, but yeah. So it's obviously HDMI, these can be awkward to put into a TV, so which is why you've got this extension cable here. Um, and this was bought from Amazon, I think it was about 40 quid, something like that. Um, if you are interested, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but yeah, there is a memory card already included, I think. Let's have a look. I'm not really sure if there's ROMs on this one, to be honest. It's really awkward to get it out. Yeah, so at the back here you've got, this will be your... Uh, this is obviously for the dongle to pick up the controllers and this will be your power supply here. So ideally you want to have a power supply pretty close. On most modern TVs I guess you'll have some kind of power supply, like a USB um, sort of slot you can put that into. Yeah, but yeah, let's, I'm trying to get this memory card out, it just won't come out. So I've actually got the memory card out, it's a 64 gig memory card. Not sure if there's any ROMs on it or what, I'm not sure, it does say in the box that you may actually had, have to add your own games. So we'll find out soon enough uh, when we connect it to the TV. But yeah, I had to actually open it up slightly to actually get into it. It does seem to click in place easy enough, but yeah, that's probably not, not the greatest design at all. But yeah, it does click straight back down. Nice enough looking stick, but be interesting to see how powerful this is. I don't know why they bother putting the 4K Ultra HD thing on that because really you're never going to play these games like that you tend to find if you do you'll probably get massive slowdown when you try to do that okay there's also a, it's a instruction manual it says it's running by MULX so that's pretty good if that's the case um, not sure that's very helpful that's all in Chinese and that side so we've got the English instructions on this side it does look as if it's MULX yeah it's a reasonable um, recent emulec I guess that would be quite cool I'm not sure if there's any games on it we'll soon find out if not then we're going to have to try and find some of our own games and put them on okay so this is the, the device actually loaded up now it does actually have games already on it um, if you can see here that us uh, go through it this is emulec which is really cool um, all games let's see how many it's actually got so <laughs> It's already got 30,000 games. It does it, it does actually say on the box that there's no ROMs included, that you have to add them yourself. I wonder if that's just a market employee just to put everybody off the scent that this is obviously 
um, a bit of a dodgy product as usual per these things but yeah there are games already on this interesting 52 PlayStation games. Anyway, let's put this up properly. I just thought I'd show you that quickly before we move on. Okay guys, so once you've got your stick loaded to your monitor or TV, um, this is what you're greeted with, um, which sometimes can be a good sign. The fact that it looks this nice and it's using the Emulek uh, can usually be a, a reasonable, decent sign it should be okay. But unfortunately, having played this the last few days, this isn't great at all. The emulation is all over the place. But Anyway, I'll go through the settings uh, and show you the games that are included and then we'll play some of the games and I'll, I'll talk about some of the issues with this device. Um, so obviously you can see here we've got 32,000 games. There's a lot of repetitive uh, games included, um, so it's not probably 30,000. There is a lot of games added, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely not 30,000 or 32,000. Um, it'll probably be a lot less than that, um, but still tons of games, certainly still thousands of games included. If you look at all games, um, it's probably not the best way of looking at it. Um, you can add favourites as well, which is quite handy if you want to jump straight to your favourite game. All you do is hold down or just press X and it will um, allocate that to the favourite tab there, which is quite handy. But something quite apart here, there's a lack of options, there's a lack, lack of settings, um, you really don't have access to much at all. It is meant as a plug and play device and um, if you press the sort of start button on the, the sort of joypad all it brings up is these options here sound settings system setting information that is it you can change your language you can restore the default says that's it and it's the same once you go into the games it looks like it's been removed like all access to the retro arc i'm assuming run the back end been removed so you can't adjust any settings whatsoever um, which is an absolute nightmare. So let's have a look at arcade classics quickly. Um, you can sort of quickly scroll through them left and right, up and down. Um, as I said, look at the options at the bottom of the screen. There's some things there. You've got a search function. Um, if you want to find your favourite game, you can sort of do that here, which is really handy because you can look at the, the layout there. It's laid out by some kind of numbers down the left hand side. Really unhelpful. It's not by alphabetical order, you can't even fix it by alphabetical order. Um, so it's an absolute nightmare trying to find your game in the first place. So you really have to do a lot of scrolling. It's all in some crazy order, numbered order. Makes absolutely no sense to nobody. Um, but thankfully there's a search option, so there is that. That certainly um, saves the day a little bit. And as, as I mentioned earlier, you can press X, it adds a game to the favourites, for example, there you go, added to favourites, and just press it again, it will remove it again. Um, there is an option, you see there, game options, hold the A button. It doesn't work, it's obviously been removed, which is a shame because it would have been great to access the emulation options behind it, but there's nothing. It really is set up as it is, you can't change a thing. So absolute nightmare there. So press B to go back, you can scroll through them all, there's Final Burn Neo, um, there's only 19 games, not really sure, and you can see here it's it's an absolute mess. A lot of the, the game dis descriptions are pretty much as what the ROM name is. Um, but there's some cool games here, you might recognise some of the pictures on the right hand side. Um, but yeah, it definitely screams of a very lazy attempt at creating a, a game stick. Just really dumped a whole load of ROMs, probably not tested anything, and just shoved it out there to make a quick sale. It absolutely stinks something awful. Um, tons of Atari games, and pretty similar to one of the first game sticks I played, the Atari emulation is absolutely all over the place. Some of the games just don't run right at all and, and are just crackling and, and look terrible, which is bizarre. But there's tons of ROMs added here, again in completely weird order as you can see, makes no sense, but there's lots of the games there, there's 5200 as well, um, 7800. So there's plenty there. Some of the, the games, I mean, don't get me wrong, some of these games do run fine. You will see that in a minute. Um, but some, the emulation really isn't particularly great at all. Um, we've got the Capcom Play System stuff as well. Um, I'm not going to go through everything here. I'll just jump through some of them. You can see the, the layout. This one's a little bit better than the layout. It's a little bit ABC, which is a little bit better, but still numbered for some reason. PC Engine. Uh, NES games. This has 12,000 and there's a lot of repetitive games within this. It looks like they've just dumped tons and tons of different style games. As you can see here, the, the um, layout is just baffling. Doesn't make any sense. But there's tons of games in here. And that's for sure. Not sure what this one is. I think there's NES hacked games, I think. Not entirely sure what's going on there. Um, we've got Game Boy games. There's tons of them. 
there's 1800 Super Famicom. Again, they've sort of mixed the, the sort of folders here, obviously Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, it's just messy as heck. And you've got Super Nintendo stuff as well. 75 games, they might as well have just lumped it into this folder. Makes no sense. As you can see here, there's a lot of repetitive games here. You've got Europe versions, Japan versions, USA versions. Why? I don't know. I mean, you might want to play a different version. There might be some variations, I guess, and that's happened, but it really makes the game count seem a bit unnatural, naturally high. So we've got nearly 3,000 Game Boy Color games. Great. Game Boy Advance games. This is one of the ones the emulation wasn't particularly great. Um, if I kind of jump into... Yeah, I'll probably jump into Doom soon and I'll show you. It just doesn't run great. Sega Genesis, another one that emulation is pretty awful. Uh, sometimes a lot of slowdown. Uh, we've got Game Gear. Sega Genesis again. Not entirely sure why. We've got different folders. One's Genesis, one's maybe Mega Drive variations. I have no clue. Neo Geo Pocket Color. Interesting. Um, and th finally, they've actually added PlayStation games. And I've tried a couple and they actually run quite well. This is probably one of the, the surprising elements of this device. We've got some PlayStation ROMs added. Yeah, we've got Grand Theft Auto, and there's a few sort of games you might recognise. Um, Dino Crisis, Crash Bandicoot, and it's even got a version, uh, it's even got Tomb Raider included, uh, which I played through and it seemed to run okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now, guys, go and I'll jump into a game and I'll show you some of the in-game settings, or lack of, and I'll pinpoint one issue that's going to have a big effect for most of the games here. So if we jump quickly into just the first game really in King of Fighters 97, uh, this is Arcade. Um, it seems to actually play okay, I mean not uh, some games play okay, some don't, it really mix and match. Some of the, the emulation is absolutely awful though, and surprisingly so, and there's no way of changing it. There's no options that you can actually mess about with, change the emulator for, a, for example. Nothing, absolutely nothing, and games do take a, a good few seconds to actually load in, some are worse than others as well. So we get greeted with this, the, the screen is fine, everything seems absolutely fine, no big issues. As you can probably see here, everything is set up widescreen. Now for this game, it doesn't look too bad. Um, but if you go through all the different emulators, from even the Game Boy games stretched out, super uh, widescreen rubbish. It just looks awful um, and unplayable at times. If you're playing this on a big screen that's been stretched out, awful. And there's no way of changing it. I, I couldn't find any obvious way of changing the widescreen to, obviously... Uh, a letterbox or something, but it, useless. So uh, it's just not on. Some games you can get, get away with. Like it, it's probably fine for Game Boy Advance games, Atari Lynx games, the PlayStation games maybe. But a lot of these games are not meant for widescreen, and it just looks awful. This one is fine, um, and it looks okay. And even the emulation is actually okay. Um, and it plays fine. And the joypad's actually okay. The D-pad's a little, a lot of movement in it, but it's it's workable. You can still use the, the the thumbsticks as well. They're fine. Not clickable, but they work fine. And the shoulder buttons are actually all right as well. Um, so the joypad's functional. That certainly is pleasantly okay to play. The buttons are, are decent as well. Um, but I found that there's probably just a little bit too much movement in the the joypad. But otherwise, the joypad passes for me. But the game. No. So if you want to jump into the settings, you can press the mode button or start and select together and it brings you this very, very basic um, menu screen. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to jump into. And you've got your load save state, you can just save. And you go back in again, you can obviously load that back in again um, as it was. Like that. Pretty straightforward, and that's it. That's all you've got. You've got access to no other options whatsoever, um, which is an absolute nightmare, really. Um, and obviously, just quick game. You go back to the main menu again, and that's it. So it's very, very basic, very simple. Sometimes that's ideal, but when the emulation isn't set up perfect, and you've got games playing widescreen that don't look right, or games not running perfect at all, it'd be great to be able to jump into options to be able to tweak it, but I guess that's not what these things are all about. Anyway guys, what I'm going to do now is play through some games, I'll highlight some of the issues, I'll even play some of the games that are running well, um, just in case you are interested in buying this, but my overall impression of this unit is it really isn't great at all, there's better game sticks out there. But anyway, let's have a look at some of the gameplay.
Call for one to putt. Okay, so there was no sound playing this version of River Raid. There are other versions there that did have sound, but it was all garbled, much in the way that Hero was as well. I'm really totally dumbfounded that Atari 2600 doesn't emulate well at all.
So on the odd occasion, I've had to uh, turn the unit off and on again because I've chosen a game and then I've just got a black screen and nothing has happened. Sometimes it does load after a certain amount of time, but on the odd occasion, I just got a black screen like this, nothing happened. I had to completely turn the unit off. Not ideal.
Okay guys, so we've reached the end of the video and as you can probably tell from the different um, game formats some games play well, some don't. Um, the emulation is really all over the place. PlayStation being the pleasant surprise that the game seemed to run all right. I'm sure you'll still have some issues here and there, but it was certainly great playing Grand Theft Auto all over again. Um, looks absolutely terrible, but it was actually surprisingly addictive. I really enjoyed it back at, in the day. Late 90s, great fun. Um, but yeah, overall this device, I really wouldn't recommend it at all. There's far too many issues with it. Um, so all the games playing widescreen, no matter what format you're playing it on. I mean, sometimes it'll look okay, sometimes it'll just look unplayable and look dreadful on your TV. Um, but yeah, it's not great. There's some good games on here that do run well. But there's far too many things that don't work well on this, like Atari 2600, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, they just don't run great at all. Um, really poor performance. Um, there's better sticks out there, guys, and I recently reviewed the X2 game stick, which I'll leave a link in the description as well, which I thought was really, really good. Um, but this one, avoid.